put in the air. We all entered the cloud together and were seven days ascending to the sea of glass. Let's take another look at this chart. Notice the words Hag Ha Sukkoth, the last line under tabernacles. That simply means day of booths or temporary dwellings. Uh, these were reminders that they lived in temporary dwellings on their way to the promised land. It's a reminder of when they went through uh, uh, the land of Egypt and, and didn't have permanent homes and on into Canaan and so forth. But we'll not have permanent homes for a while either. And it does look forward, like Ellen White said. You see, we're going to be roaming the world in a time of trouble. We might have to leave our homes and, and have a little more difficult time finding a place to stay. And even while kings and priests on the earth, we still won't have permanent homes. And then on that glorious seven-day tri trip through the stars, uh, will we have permanent homes along the way? Oh, no. And how about the first thousand years? Some think it'll be on the earth. If that's your thought, friend, uh, please check out the tape on the millennium. Order it and get that straightened out. For a thousand years, we'll live in the glorious realm of heaven. But that's not our permanent home either. But speaking of that final home on earth, Ah, that's when we'll see Christ recreated all in front of us and we will build our country homes and God will provide our city homes in His holy city. Well, let's not move ahead too fast, though. Uh, let's look in our chart. The last red pole is called Shimini Atzeret. simply means the eighth day, the eighth day of assembly. Now, the Talmud explains the nature of the holiday in a following parable. A king once gave a feast to which the diplomatic representatives of many nations were invited. Now think of that, that wonderful feast we're going to have in heaven when Christ takes us there and dwellers from all over the universe will come to meet us. Just have that in mind as I read this parable. The feast lasted for seven days. When they were all ready to depart, the king called aside his son, who was also among the guests, and said to him, While all these strangers were around, we hardly had an opportunity to have an intimate conversation. Tarry thou one day longer, when we shall hold a simple feast all by ourselves. The Talmud goes on to explain that the son's name is Israel. So try to get the picture as I see it. We're all in heaven at last. A great feast is prepared, miles of tables, millions of beings we have never known will be there to welcome us. It'll be a joyful time, the biggest reunion feast of all. Israel has never been to such a feast, has existed for 6,000 years but have never seen such a thing. Every time they look up at Christ, their gratefulness will multiply tenfold. Finally, when the feast is over, and all the other beings from the other worlds are on their way home, time to go, the Father calls Israel aside and says, It's been the best feast of joy we've ever had since sin entered the universe. Come now, stay an extra day that we might have some personal time together. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. You know that day that we spend with Christ in the kingdom may last a thousand years. A thousand years as a day. You know, I hope it does. And I wonder how the feast of the Almighty will compare with the substituted feast that the Antichrist has so tantalizingly placed in front of people here on the earth causing their sympathies and all of these things to, to grow and be involved in them. My, my, how gullible we've been. Praise Him for bringing us into the light. Amen? 
Let's take a short view of the spring feasts. We've been looking at all the fall feasts. Let's look at the spring feasts for just a moment and see how they might apply. Actually, they contain the messages that we must take to the world and even the power to take them. In other words, Passover. What does Passover teach? Does it teach that a sheep will someday be crucified? <laughs> no, not if you don't have sheep on the table. What, what, what does it teach? It teaches salvation by the blood. Oh, friends, you should get the video on a Christian Passover. All through it is New Testament applications. Passover saved by the blood. Unleavened bread. What does that teach? That teaches that sin is not an acceptable practice. It's to be dropped. It's to be set aside. When the devil puts evil thoughts in there to be put out, sin is not to be practiced. That's unleavened bread. Friends, if our children were taught the reason and the principles of unleavened bread, I think they would be sweeter, nicer, kinder children. Wave sheaf. What does that teach? <laughs> well, it teaches the resurrection. Not only uh, looks back on the fact that he had a resurrection, but it also looks forward to ours. Pentecost. What is this? Oh, it's the promise of the anointing spirit. Anointing of the spirit that will give us much more knowledge from the law of God, as we've learned before, and later give us spiritual power to take it around the world. The loud cry during the awesome days of the days of all. Trumpets. Well, this gets us into the fall feasts. Trumpets is the first of the fall feasts. It's filled with special messages important for the church today. Yet just before that comes teshuva, repentance, giving to God. Oh yes, friends, right now make everything right with Christ and not with your tongue in cheek. Teshuva was established centuries ago by certain Israelites who sensed the seriousness of the coming feast. Teshuva. We need a time of total soul repentance. We need a time to get that final oil in our lamp. So what are the last feasts anyway? What are we looking at? At the last of the Jewish year, the seventh month, here they are, Rosh Hashanah, trumpets, the church is judged, and the 144,000 begin to present, and their friends begin to start presenting the loud cry to the world. And that's followed by Yom Kippur, the close of probation on this world. That's followed by tabernacles, the deliverance of the saints, and the second coming. And finally, Shemini Atzeret, that wonderful feast that we're going to have with Christ and the kingdom of God, and the Father and the Son and Christ himself will be going up and down the table, I do believe, and will share the most wonderful food we've ever had in the history of mankind. Are you ready for that? Oh, friends. We've missed a lot in neglecting the feasts of God. Our Heavenly Father, we pause to thank you for the Jewish economy and the lessons that it teaches. Bless us as we take them to heart. Help us to make our hearts holy in thy guidance, in thy strength, and by thy power. We ask in the name of Yahshua, our Savior. Amen.